Well, to get the very latest from Beirut now, let's bring in our correspondent, Leila Milana Allen. Leila, first of all, what did the protesters do exactly to get Parliament shut down? So they were highly organized today. They had, in fact, planned this for last Tuesday, which is when the session was supposed to happen. But after all the protests were planned, the Speaker of the Parliament, Nabi Berri, said that he was going to postpone it by a week. Protesters said, OK, we'll postpone our protests by a week. So they had called people to turn out from 5 a.m. this morning to form a human shield around Parliament to try and stop parliamentarians, those MPs, from actually being able to reach the session. And they were extremely successful. They had organized sending around maps, graphics on various means of social social media in order to show people where the best points to create roadblocks were so that people couldn't get through. It worked and constantly they were sending messages to each other throughout the morning saying we haven't got enough people at this place, at this place. Where people were able to get through and were able to reach Parliament, eventually the army were telling about five MPs who managed to reach that they simply weren't going to have a session because there weren't enough people. And so they really were incredibly jubilant when it was announced just after 11am, which was when the session was supposed to happen, that they had succeeded in doing so. Now, it was not without violence. The situation was incredibly tense this morning. Of course, these protests were expected, and as a result, thousands of riot police and army had been put out on the streets, heavily armed with riot gear. They had encircled the entire square where Parliament is with barbed wire, and they had five men deep lines there with shields to stop protesters. There were many scuffles this morning. I was in the middle of some of them, seeing young protesters being beaten with batons. There was tear gas on hand. That wasn't used, but there were a lot of injuries. Medics from the Lebanese Red Cross running in and out of the crowd with helmets on trying to retrieve those protesters and treat them and when they were treated most of them went back straight back into the fray to carry on protesting. Leila this is now as you mentioned the second time this parliamentary session has been postponed due to this protest movement what does it mean for it now going forward? So the announcement when it was given, it was said the Secretary General of Parliament said that it was being cancelled because they could not reach quorum. They couldn't have enough people actually coming. But before, there were 128 MPs in Parliament. 53 had already boycotted by this morning, saying that if protesters were this angry about the situation, they shouldn't be holding this parliamentary session anyway. So on the one hand, many parliamentarians not wanting to go ahead at the moment under the current circumstances, and even when they wanted to, as I say, they couldn't reach. The fact that protesters now know they can do this, that they've been successful, despite the huge number of security forces that were turned out this morning. And great efforts from many parliamentarians to reach Parliament really has changed the dynamic because essentially they can't continue to function. What's been happening right now is that as far as protesters are concerned, the government is completely ignoring them and just trying to carry on with its own agenda. This is a caretaker government now ever since Prime Minister Saad Hadidi resigned on October 29th and many people saying they should not be legislating at all. People are unhappy with the laws they were trying to pass today, but that's not even the issue. Issue. Firstly, they, it's unconstitutional, according to constitutional lawyers here, for them to try and pass laws. And secondly, these shouldn't be their priorities. Right now, they should be trying to institute a crisis government to deal with the economic crisis that is happening in Lebanon. Leila, thank you for that. Leila Milana Allen, they're reporting for us from Beirut.